If you're somebody who's interested in making good ads, whether it's for yourself or for a client or something like that, I'm gonna walk through the thought process, the choices that went into making this ad set. All right, so part one, let's talk about the concept. How did this thing come about? What was the thought process behind putting it together? This is not the technical specs. This is the, the kind of ethereal, emotional, um, uh, philosophical reasons it came about. So what happened is Big Joe came to me. They said, hey, we want to do an ad for a new product called the Lagoon Lounger. This thing is crazy comfy. In fact, um, it's dreamlike, right? Like you're going to fall to sl fall asleep in this thing. And it's so dreamlike, we called it the Lagoon Lounger. And what lives in lagoons? Mermaids live in lagoons, obviously. Mermaids live in the lagoons. And so when they said we might want to do something with a mermaid tail or something kind of fantastical, I was like, you guys are awesome. Because it's kind of rare when a client brings you an idea that's more creative than what you probably would have pitched them, right? Not even more creative, just more um, dangerous almost, right? Like it's, it's a bigger risk to film something with mermaids, right, than just to film a regular product video. And that's one of the things that I uh, respect so much about this client um, and that I also think is a benefit of filming not the traditional style of like, we're going to make a commercial. It's a commercial. All the money goes into one edit. Uh, maybe there's a 16 or a 60, a 30 and a 15. Maybe there's different time cuts, but it's not a different concept versus in this case, this is actually the ad set that we delivered to them. It's seven things, right? It's not just one thing. And I think that's the main difference between a commercial where you have to put literally all of your eggs in one basket and an ad set where you get to say like, Hey, we're going to film a bunch of stuff and we're aiming for like three to six deliverables. So we took the mermaid tail and my original pitch was, uh, this is an unreleased, uh, version of the ad an unreleased edit. My original pitch was, you know, girl falls asleep on her very comfortable lagoon lounger raft. We get this classic moment where she starts dreaming. She wakes up, realizes she has a mermaid tail and falls off and then jolts awake. It's just like a classic dream sequence. I did this in my movie Turbo Cola. I've done this multiple times. I didn't come up with it. I'm not saying it's not cheesy. I'm just saying that it's a thing that we've seen a bunch and people immediately understand what's happening, right? Um, and so that was one of the original things is like, hey, let's film this sequence because then we can recut it any way we want to. And so when we're shooting, you know, this shot of her waking up, we get one where she's horrified and she falls asleep. We get another take where she's like, oh yeah, cool mermaid tail, right? I'm not scared of this. And so we use the um, ability to get coverage in our individual setups uh, to our advantage and we film tons of content. And then after she falls off, you get all of the crazy good, you know, product shots and we overfilm that too, right? We overshoot that so that you have a bank of footage that you can build a lot of assets from, right? It's not just, here's the straight storyboard of this 30 second ad and that's all we're shooting. There's more to it than that, right? Here is version two of that ad where we cut out the beginning of her falling asleep and everything. We dove right into it because we felt like there needed to be a stronger kind of like hook right in the beginning and showing her already asleep with the mermaid tail ended up being a good captain hook. Sorry about that. And so in this version, we brought in the White Lotus music, kind of inspired by that show that was really big at the time. It's not actually White Lotus music, it just sounds like it. She falls off, wakes up. And we brought in the idea of like saying the pool float of your dreams to really tie into people like what what the goal of that first segment was. And then the final deliverables were these type of things, right? It was like a longer edit that was mostly just shots of the product being awesome with reusing these text call out things that we'd done a bunch in the past for Big Joe and highlighting all of the things like the convenient grab and go handles and all of that with text, right? And so we had that edit. We also had a one-to-one -one version of that. That's square, right? It's the same edit. It's just re, uh, restructured and reoriented to, to work for that. We also had a shorter version of that, which was this social edit. And then we had our dream sequence ones. And then we also had a dream one where she falls asleep and she's not really sad about it. She's not sad that she has a mermaid tail. happy to be 
So much shorter edits. When the algorithm has multiple options to choose from, it gets to say like which one goes to which person, right? And so it puts these different ads in front of different people. And in this case, we gave it seven things to mess with. And so it gets to say like, well, all right, some people are going to like uh, this one here. And because it's very straightforward, right? It just has all the text call outs on it. And some people are going to love this one here because it's got a mermaid in it and they like that kind of fun, magical thing. And some people like the longer ones because they need to decide, you know, they need longer with the product to decide. They're more like suspicious. And some people, they just need the short one. And so the short one will give to them. And the algorithms are so, so smart right now um, that giving them this kind of uh, depth of content of seven things to use um, seems to be the way to go. All right, part two, tech stuff for nerds. We actually shot this uh, in one day with a two-person crew. It was a Blackmagic cinema camera. And this day that we shot was um, a very, very gloomy overcast day in, in Orlando, Florida. Uh, it was raining early in the morning. We thought, oh my gosh, the whole thing's totally out. Our actress here, who we cast from backstage, you know, was kind of available this day specifically, and so we kind of had to make it work. We ended up bringing in our very, very uh, bright LED light. We had a Nanlite 720B, which is a bicolor light, and we ended up literally in almost every shot you see Hunter, who was on set with me that day, kind of like gripping. Um, he's literally like right off camera here like right to the side. And he's just literally got the light as close as he can possibly get and still be off camera shining this way on, on uh, our actress. And so the whole day basically was just him chasing us around with that light backlighting and side lighting her to give us some sort of, of sunlight. Um, and the pool was just like a teal gray color because the sky was teal gray. And so we had to go in and kind of like qualify it and then push it into the the blue as if the sunlight was like reflecting off of it. And so in some shots you can see like obviously the sky is just like a, a gray blob up there, um, but it all goes by so fast. Shots like this, you can see there's like a shadow there. And the only reason there's a shadow there is because our light is literally like off camera right here just like blasting down as close as a hunter can possibly get it at a hundred percent at like, you know, 3000 degrees Kelvin here. It kind of looks like she's sort of kind of sun sunbathing and literally the light is just like over here cranking in just right off camera as close as possible. It probably actually felt good for her, but it was kind of a, a chilly day. And here there's another example. The light is literally just off camera here, just shining in as strong as it possibly can just from there like hunter's like right there and he's basically walking with me as i'm panning just to try and keep the light as close to her as possible it feels like there's a little bit of sunlight from somewhere and i'm like seriously because i'm from pennsylvania and it's gray here and we shot this in january essentially and uh i'm like we're going to florida we're going to shoot this in florida it'll be so easy because it's going to be bright and beautiful and it's like the one day that it was just like brutal brutally overcast last thing i wanted to mention here technically was how we got this like underwater uh water line here I've done this before where the whole camera is encased in like a really professional housing. And I've also done it before with a fish tank where we were filming a crabbing boat um, for giant foods. We were shooting like a documentary thing about a crabber on a boat. And we literally on the way there, we went to like Walmart and bought like a medium sized fish tank because we'd seen it online from like Jacob Owens or somebody. We put the camera in there and literally held the fish tank in the water so we could get underneath. What I did here was kind of the middle ground between the two things um, because I knew really what I wanted was this split view thing. I didn't really ever want to be like under, under, underwater. I just wanted to be able to come up out of the water, almost as if we were the people swimming. So the rig for these underwater setups was actually like, if this is the water line, it was a little bag type camera rig here where um, I had the, the top of it open and a little EVF viewfinder on a magic arm sticking out. So I had my little monitor here, a little viewfinder I could look at, and the cameras here with the lens underwater, but I never dipped far enough underwater to fill the bag with, you know, anything. And, um, it was sealed and, you know, on the sides, it was perfectly sealed. And I was only concerned about this top seal here and about actually closing the top of the, like, it's basically a Ziploc bag with a spot for the lens, uh, like a black Ziploc bag. And so I just never ducked it all the way under the water. We just kind of kept it right on level here and did the whole sort of barely under the water and then back up. Uh, but when my eye was on the EVF, I was really close a couple times to just like dunking the entire camera <laughs> underwater, which would not have been uh, not have been great. 
So yeah, that's the Lagoon Lounger. I think for me, a project like this is such a cool opportunity to do some narrative kind of fun beats and storytelling and also to make an ad that's like straight up product call outs and stuff. And when those things can come together, um, it feels like for the client, it's the best of both worlds because they get a little creativity, they get a little fun, um, they get something that stands out from just just the, the slog of beautiful, bright e-commerce imagery, right? And so there's a little bit of a standout, but then it's also just some beautiful shots of the product as well. And I think that's a, that's a win-win for everybody. Well, thanks for watching this. If you want to hear more, I'm going to make more of these, I think. So feel free to drop a comment with what you'd like to see or hear differently, um, more things you're interested in or not. And the other thing is I am uh, working on a three hour long director's commentary for my feature film, Turbo Cola which won the Independent Feature Film of the Year Award from Film Threat last year and got a bunch of other cool accolades. Um, and I'm putting together the commentary for that. It'll be about three hours long. It's gonna cost money because it has to be behind a paywall because uh, the movie is out there on Apple TV and Amazon and everywhere and I can't give it away for, for free here on YouTube. Um, but if you're interested in that, you can definitely jump on the wait list and I'll send you an email when it's ready. Uh, besides that, thank you for watching. And I'll see you around, make, make good movies.